So my name is Francois Tico, and I work for Siena. And today I'll be doing the presentation with uh, Nasser Ezati, who is a research assistant from Polytechnic Montreal. Uh, he's working in the Darshan lab. And today we're missing Annie Nemati, who is the PhD student who did most of the work. So Annie was not able to make it today. And we're going to be talking about uh, how to do performance analysis across virtualized uh, virtual machines. So the agenda for today, we're going to first talk about uh, the motivation for our collaboration with uh, Polytechnic Montreal. Then we're just going to slightly introduce the different layers in the virtualization system. Then we're going to talk about the new approach that we are proposing for the presentation. And get into a cool set of uh, analysis technique that we were able to do from that. So we looked at flow nested VMs. We also looked at uh, nested VMs configuration and uh, Linux advanced packaging tool analysis on desirable parallelism. Then we're going to jump into a trace compass update, a demo, and a conclusion. So our motivation for that. So at CNN we use, you know, like all the virtualization technology that's readily available. Most of people in the room probably use and emulators, containers, software virtualization, hardware assist virtualization, and prior virtual virtualization. So nothing surprising here, but what happens if you work on a very large, large scale project and you want to simulate, for example, in our case, it's, you, know, you want to simulate a very large numbers of network elements, um, switches, routers, and so on. So where do you start you know, when you want to scale to a very large number of any simulation to look at your performance and your scalability? So this is what the motivation is. So let's say we start from this um, very simple um, node simulation configuration as an example. So here it's a, node, a simple node with two cards. And the node obviously can have more than two. But uh, in this example, we show two cards, one with one compute system, another one with three compute system. Each compute system is emulated in its own VM. So already with one node, you have four VMs. And beyond that, you have a virtual bridge, bridge to simulate the communication so the card can communicate with each other. So now we take this simulation environment and we run it in different places. So the obvious place is maybe on the designer host, for example, you have your simulation and you run on your host where in this case you have the layer zero and the layer one. Nothing new here, and then well, we can run that in the cloud. And in the cloud you've got another layer. You've got your cloud machine, you've got your layer one where basically you emulate the host that we have in the single host example above. And then within that, you run, you know, numerous instances of simulations. So, what's our motivation for looking at performance and scalability in the case where we relate large networks? Well, first of all, we want to look at uh, the simulation performance. On how much time it takes to boot and shut down. Uh, the performance of your running software. So for that, you know, obviously a good, a good target is to have the same performance as your uh, bare metal on your product. Next aspect we want to look at is your scalability numbers. So maybe one designer maybe want to simulate one to ten nodes. That's kind of you know, all part what you tend to want to do. But in the cloud, if you want to emulate maybe now a very, very large network, for example, you may have like 1,000 enemies to 10,000 enemies. So later on, we can touch base on that a bit more. But you know, software upgrade is something we do all the time, you know, and it's very important to have good performance there. And that later on in the presentation, we're going to touch base on that. We go into the details of this part. And then the next thing is, you know, you buy a cloud machine. Those are quite expensive machines. Where do you spend your money? You spend your money on cash, on, on the RAM, file system, what, you know, where do you get the most bang for the buck? 
It's a little demonstration for our interaction with the enemy. I don't know if you want to go. Now, the thing that challenges there is you have like a lot of layers, right? Obviously with a lot of software. And then each layer has its own OS kernel and libraries. Obviously in layer zero you have your BIOS, your machine. In layer two you run in your simulator. So one problem there is that you know each layer is separated from each other. Obviously it's by design for security reasons. And then you know the regular tools that we're used to, to use in that environment they are either you know, they don't apply or they are subject to Thanks for that. As Francois said, uh, you know, it's a realistic uh, industry level uh, configuration. We have uh, several uh, layers of uh, virtualization. So we have uh, virtual machines, we have uh, nested uh, virtual machines. So, you know, all of this uh, execution units run in the shared environment. So if something bad happens in one of these streams, it may affect other elements as well, other layers, other virtual machines. So, if you want to investigate the problem in this uh, environment, uh, you must probably need to uh, analyze all of the virtual machines or all of the environment together. So, the question here is that uh, how to do a unified analysis of all of these layers together? We already have a nice, uh, interesting feature in uh, Trace Compass called the uh, Fused Virtual Machine. Uh, with this tool, if you trace all the virtual machines and collect all the data from all layers and uh, synchronize them, then uh, you can see all executions together in an uh, in a, in a integrated view or a fused view that shows all shows the execution of all layers together with uh, different colors. Uh, but that is not always that easy. Actually, uh, sometimes it's not uh, feasible to do uh, tracing in all layers. Let's say you have uh, different uh, operating systems. You have virtual uh, Windows machine, Mac OS, Linux, all kernels. Uh, or you may have, uh, uh, because of the privacy or security, you're not able to install tracer in your virtual machine. or uh, you have access, but you have limited resources, so you, you don't want to spend a lot of resources for the tracing. So there are possibilities that you cannot install tracing, you cannot collect data from inside the VM. Uh, so the second question is that uh, can we do can we do this unified analysis, this unified multiple analysis, by just tracing the host without going to each layer, each virtual machine, each container? Actually, uh, this, this work presents a tool called Grid Flow. Uh, it's a set of views and analysis uh, built on top of a trace compass that provides uh, this kind of analysis. Actually, it collects the trace just from the host without going inside the VMs. And it does a unified analysis for the whole uh, virtualized environment. So I will see how this works. Actually, it uh, provides some new views. One of them is a vCPU view that shows the uh, state of virtual CPUs for each uh, virtual machine. It shows different states. It's running, it's preempted, and different states. Also, for each process uh, running inside the VM, it shows the execution status. It's running, waiting, waiting for what resource, or which resource, why it's waiting, or uh, it's running or different states actually. So it shows different, different execution states and different waiting uh, states. Uh, but how actually it works, how it, it connects the data, this, this slide, the, the explanation of this slide is published, uh, is published as a paper in IT transactions, so I'm not going to explain all of the details, but what it, in, in summary, what it actually does. Uh, in, in trace compass and control flow, we can see uh, okay, the first line shows the cumulative thread. So you see that the orange is uh, somehow is the waiting or block. Then green shows it runs in uh, a user space. But it doesn't show too much detail about it. But the vCPU view that is offered in this book uh, shows the 
more details of that. So it shows, for example, here, uh, it detects actually the, the reason for the blocking. It shows that it was a fine. Then uh, it shows that there are some, the, the yellows here are you know, virtualization over Actually, the times that uh, the controller goes to the VMM, uh, the, the virtual machine root one. And uh, it actually shows that the real execution uh, was only this part of all this part. So you can get more details. And it uses actually VM to VM exit uh, QMU uh, trace events to uh, extract all of this info. <coughs> it also works for uh, nested uh, VM. Let's say you have virtual machine and inside that you have another VM. So by this analysis, by this tool, we can get the executions and uh, uh, the CPU, uh, visual CPU and process executions from uh, inside that nested VM just by tracing the host. Uh, so there are some patterns, actually we extracted some patterns uh, to, to get this uh, uh, execution states. For example, here uh, for the nested VM, uh, the second part, actually it shows that uh, so it actually follows the VM entries, VM exits, and uh, injected by uh, IOQs or other uh, events. But here, for example, uh, VM exit the JSON 24 is a key element to detect it, to detect that it's going to run a nested VM code. So there are some patterns for different states by following and by matching those patterns from the uh, trace events collected from the host. We can. Uh, Actually, draw the vCPU view and the process execution view and the process uh, execution timeline. Uh, for example, yeah, here let me show you one, one example of how we can use or where we can use this tool or what kind of problem that this tool can detect. Um, we are running lots of uh, virtual machines together, and they they are all doing their they all are doing the same execution, but some of them are very slow. Uh, so we investigated the, the execution by tracing the host. We saw that uh, uh, some of them, uh, the VMs that are slow, actually they use, uh, they do not follow our pattern. So by looking at uh, the details of, the, of them, we saw that we figured out that they actually need to run all kernels. So maybe your administrator uh, forgot to update, to upgrade the kernels of those VMs. Anyhow, but after upgrading the VMs, we saw that uh, we get uh, normal executions and actually all the uh, overheads uh, uh, go down. Or for another problem, uh, another thing that this tool can be used for is uh, actually it shows all the uh, resource contention. Let's say we have uh, nested VMs and VMs and uh, different actually different uh, hierarchy. If they preempt each other, and if they compete on system resource of CPU disclosure, this tool can show. For example, here it shows that uh, the blue, for example, here is, uh, is preemption uh, level one. And if you see this, it shows preemption level one, level zero, is the first level of visualization, second level of visualization. So we can see all the uh, preemptions, all the resource contention using this tool. Okay, so. An automation for the interaction with Polytechnique Montreal and using tracing in the areas are to look at our virtualization performance. So when you think about that, you know, for our grade, you know, the simulation environment become a perfect playground to understand and study uh, the performance bottlenecks or just how a grade works. So I will explain in detail a bit more details why it becomes a perfect playground because at, uh, you know like a uh, telecommunication industry. So a grid, what's often used is uh, what I refer to, or what, what is referred to as a rolling of grid. So basically you have two cars that spur each other. One car is the primary, it's active, it's providing service. Another car is you know, a standby car. So how do you upgrade that? Well, you upgrade first a standby car, it will go into the new load, and then the services on that car will become ready to be active. Then you do a switch over from the primary to the secondary. And then uh, previously primary becomes secondary and we go into the new load and you know through that process there is like car reboots and car restarts and all of that. So now this allows us to have a, 
in at the from the host because the host is up during the process to trace the VMs and then aggregate the traces from all of them and put them together and do analysis over response. Um, so one other kit and well one benefit for us to look at the performance is we use performance like I said before we use performance and upgrade all the time, right? In DevOps for example, you know after every load we have like uh, we run sanity, some regression tests, and then after, outside of DevOps as well, we have lots of automation tests. So the first thing you want to do in that scenario is you need to upgrade. So upgrade is key. So I pass it back to now, sir. So uh, other feature that Vimflow offers is critical path analysis. Critical path analysis to all uh, high-local layers. Let's like, say like you have a process running a nested VM, and you can follow that. You can see the critical path of that process execution to so all virtual machines, all hypervisor, and all host links. It also supports a distributed uh, critical path. Let's say you have virtual machines running a different machine, and they have network connection. Then by following this network connection, matching the packets, you can uh, follow the dependencies between uh, different processes running a different virtual machines. Uh, uh, but before showing some examples and demo of this, uh, I want to talk a lot little about containers. So this tool, Bitflow, can also show, can also uh, uh, reason about the containers. Let's say in your hierarchy of virtual machine, if you have a container, this tool supported. But to see if a tool, if process belongs to a container or not, you need to go to inside the VM. Right? It's just tracing the host machine. So, to support containers, you just need to get dumps of like, some structures inside the VM. And it needs actually exclusive access to the VM. Other than that, it all can be done from the host layer without touching the VM. Okay. So here's an example of uh, the critical path analysis. It's a highly critical path. Actually, it's, about, it's for uh, APT get uh, uh, programming uh, Ubuntu. So AppliCate has actually four layers. It down, first it downloads, then in the second, actually second phase it installs, then it updates the main pages, and finally it does the cleanup. But by looking at this critical path, we see uh, the, the, the phase tree has some maybe unexpected uh, dependency or lots of uh, dependencies. So by looking at that part in detail, we're looking at also the source code, we figured out that for, to update the man pages, APT get uh, forks a new process every time. For each man page, it creates a new process. But since creating a process each time needs allocating new allocating memory, needs to go to host from the VM, it actually uh, imposes some uh, latency and some performance overhead. So they could, they could do that just by maybe uh, third pool without needing to fork uh, processes for this part. So this tool can show uh, actually the details of what's, what's happening inside each step, or if there are dependency, what, what are the reasons for that dependency. Or, or if you can, if you run a multi-level, a multi thread uh, program in VM, uh, you can see it's, 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 it's actual multi-thread or the undesirable uh, parallel or undesirable part. For example, here, our multi-thread program runs in some parts, but other parts, in other duration, uh, other uh, parts, it uh, waits for another process, which is blocked by uh, this, uh, by this action, this compression. So with this tool, we can see all of this. Uh, for, for those who know about trace compass, you know that we already have a critical path analysis in trace compass. Actually, single day it doesn't uh, support uh, different levels of uh, virtualization. Uh, we just wanted to compare this uh, the new multi-level critical path with the existing critical path. So first of all, we trace uh, the virtual machine using the existing. It just shows the need for the part of execution, but using our tool actually it doesn't. It shows that it's not always running. There are some preemption states between uh, the execution. Uh, in terms of performance, actually, we did uh, the same benchmark for this too. Uh, this is the, the virtual uh, 
EPA, the previous fiscal month, so it shows that overhead for our tool is much, much less than uh, the existing fiscal principle, but the existing fiscal principle needs to trace all layers and tracing all layers uh, impose some performance overheads. Uh, how you can use this tool? Uh, it's actually used the candidate team G, all trace points in the but you just need to add one new trace points or VCPO interface. This is used for uh, extracting some data from the VMCS uh, data structure. Uh, all codes and all uh, trace compass analysis, XML and uh, analysis are available in the GitHub. You just need to run, uh, add uh, the required LTG uh, trace form to get a uh, global trace compass from the GitHub and run all the uh, analysis. Uh, I have some demos to show, but before going to demo, for those who follow the trace compass updates, in the trace compass, we have some new interesting features. Uh, first of all, it's this system is for it actually was there already, but uh, uh, it adds a new new tested system. As you know, it's, it's possible to follow the states of execution, uh, the different colors. Before the night, it was just numbers, but now it's colors and shows the execution and states of execution in different colors. So, and the time and view, so it's easy to follow. It allows to export all the trace compass views uh, to images. So we can get a screenshot of it. Actually, we can download and export views to images. Uh, also, it supports uh, trace streaming. Let's say uh, you can trace in trace on pass, and uh, uh, you find some part in this, so you can choose that part and export it as a new trace for as a new, new trace file. So then uh, you can open that trace file separately, or you can send it to someone else. Or whatever. So you can trim, you can export. Uh, any specific part of trace to a new uh, trace, CTF trace file uh, There are other uh, features like resource view enhancement. It shows uh, active trace. You can change the, the color and some fancy uh, uh, interface uh, things in trace compass. For a demo, I <coughs> just want to show um, two examples from uh, the Third floor first. The first floor, this one shows the nested VM, how it shows so the, the view here, and actually this here, the control flow, and this, we have two views uh, here, the VCPU view and nested uh, CPU view. So here we have one, one CPU with uh, four virtual, uh, one, one virtual machine with four uh, VCPU and one nested with uh, three VCPUs. So it shows, you see the control flow shows the execution. Uh, here it shows the actual execution inside the VM, it shows the VCPU real execution. And so here we can choose, it actually shows the root VMM root part, a VMM non-root or a VM execution part. And uh, for some parts also it goes to the nested VM and shows the but the only control flow is just green, it shows it's running. But in the, the VCP in the uh, virtuals, in the virtual machine or the nested virtual machine. There are some uh, preemptions, some waiting, some blocks, which uh, this new views uh, can show them. The other good uh, flow view is for the show the preemption. Okay, here you see there, there is a uh, two VMs and uh, two processes running on different two two different VMs, and here uh, the gray shows the preemption and the green shows uh, execution. So it shows how these two views preempt each other. And this uh, light uh, green actually shows the VMM group of CPU intensity and we have less uh, VMM group. Uh, also for the trace compass, as I said, now we can uh, uh, export tra part of trace as a new trace. Uh, we, save, we can save it as a new trace and we can export it to a new uh, CTL file. So here uh, we open a trace first and then let's say we look for some interesting part uh, within the trace. 
define it, say, define some part here. And let's say we want to export this part, and we want to save it as a new trace part. So we just go to file and export, export as a new trace, and you will a new name with a new name and you see the trace, uh, a new trace in the trace uh, folder. But then you can open it, so it's for sure it's a smaller trace, but uh, contains the interesting part that you choose for the That is the most important thing. So as you can see now, with these, uh, with these, new, this new event that was added in layer zero, we can have like a bunch of new analysis and views in Trace Compass. Uh, we can see our virtual CPUs, our virtual processes. We can also do critical analysis and do, you know, see where uh, the processes are waiting and all of that across the virtual machines. And then with this, we successfully use these analysis to do performance optimizations. Uh, you know, on different, on di in different cases, right? Um, looking at the different libraries that you have, like in the different layers and the different OS, how is the BIOS is configured, the best of, uh, hardware configuration, and so on. So, in conclusion, this has been very instrumental for us, and thank you for the presentation. Is there any question? So. Hi. Um, how do you how do you make sure that you get uh, the right events from the from the hypervisor? I mean, you you're using only KVM or are you using different hypervisors? Uh, for now, it just support KVM. So it just support KVM and uh, other. But KVM is already instrumented by LTG, and you follow the trace of game entry, game exit, and different reason. Uh, exit reason to extract to the real status, the real states of the execution. Because then, let's say, very often in customized hypervisor, you have uh, you run other partitions with some whatever security engines, and and um, I think the main question is how you get the scheduling events from the hypervisor. If you get this, then uh, I think you have all the information in place to to do that kind of analysis. So. Yeah, it's, now it just support KVM. For other, we need to instrument. Okay, and the um, uh, second question was um, about um, the um, other question. We can come back. Um, so this sounds awesome. Um, for how would I deploy it onto a host? What would I need to do? Where could all the packages live, etc.? Uh, what we did is we added a new instrument to the layer zero kernel. It's the vCPU and our guess uh, and everything we derive from this plus the KVM QMU. Like, everything is instrumented as well in, in, in layer zero. So Hany, well, Hany also has a GitHub uh, website, you can download the code from there. And Nasser and Hany can provide more details as well. Yeah. So basically you use LTNG as Trace, right? Yeah. And Trace compiles for gaming and analyzing the code. So we need to get the LTNG and the Trace compiles. And uh, for Trace compiles actually here it shows the yeah, I, I remember my second question. <laughs> when you cut the trace, um, can you completely uh, restore the state of which you need for the second part of the trace? Like, 
we have all the file handles assigned to file names that are all assigned to the machine. Uh, I wanted to test that, but I think yeah, it, it stores a trace time. Uh, so you can get all uh, previous states from that. Because it's complete trace, you can do it in, you can do complete analysis and you have all the states for the behavior. Yeah, yeah for sure. I'm not sure if it stores, uh, if it creates a state dump event, but uh, it somehow uh, preserves the states of the previous uh, part of the trace. I mean the, the thread names and process names and that kind of stuff that and the FTP is going to be extended to other states which will be right from, from the common trace. Um, I'm not sure if this is, uh, this is a generic feature or are you just looking at maybe uh, thread names and, and, and process names? Uh, actually, I'm not sure about that part. So, uh, for sure, it, it preserves the, the state. Yeah, but I'm not sure if it generates the new state down, so I have to look at that. I can answer you after that. Other questions? Thank you very much.